you can go and say, hey, like, can you do this favor for me? And they will more than willingly do it um, just because you have that relationship. So I think relationship building is incredibly important in this business. Like private label, retail arbitrage, there's a lot of uh, logistics and things that you need to work on. But in wholesale world, it's really all about the relationships. Welcome fellow entrepreneurs to the Entrepreneur Adventure Podcast, where we talk about Amazon wholesale and how you can use it to build an e-commerce empire, a side hustle, or anything in between. And now your host, Todd Welch. What's up, everybody? Welcome to episode 51. And today we sit down with Mina Elias. He is a private label seller who has built out a supplement brand and grew them to over seven figures. Now, you might be wondering, well, why are we sitting down with a private label person when this is supposed to be a podcast about Amazon wholesale? And the reason is because we are doing the Amazon wholesale minor refine method that we've talked about before, where we're taking these products, fixing up the listings and selling them and potentially working those into exclusive agreements and things like that. If you haven't already checked that out, you can check it out at entrepreneuradventure.com forward slash mine, M-I-N-E. Amazon private label sellers like Mina are experts at building out these listings, getting these listings, selling lots on Amazon. And so who better to talk to than a successful seller who is doing really well on Amazon, has built out multiple brands, has even sold one of those brands as well. And so we are gonna dive into the brands that he's built how he's built them and how he's built out his product pages, uh, PPC advertising on Amazon, and even some off of Amazon advertising like influence marketing and things like that. And while you may not do all of this stuff yourself as a wholesale seller, knowing about this kind of stuff and being able to give tips and tricks to the brands that we're trying to work with, then, we can become the expert, the Amazon guru for them and help further build that relationship. So I think you're really going to enjoy this episode, this interview with Mina Elias. So sit back, relax, and let's go ahead and dive into this. If you want the show notes, they're over at entrepreneuradventure.com forward slash 52, and you can pick those up. So let's go ahead and dive into this episode. All right. So we've got Mina Elias with us today. Mina, I really appreciate you coming on the show. Why don't you tell us a little bit about your background? Uh, thank you so much for having me. So um, a little bit about my background. I came to America in uh, 2011. I uh, you know, was born in Egypt, raised in Dubai. Uh, came here to study chemical engineering and chemistry. Graduated in 2014 with my bachelor's and, and 2018 with my master's in industrial engineering. So uh, was very, you know, traditional uh, set on like having a, a typical career, you know. Uh, but very quickly on, I think around 2017, 2018 is when I started feeling like, hey, you know, something's off. Like I'm working harder and harder. I'm not making as much money as I thought I would. I'm not moving as much as I had as I want to in life. Um, I don't think this is right. Like, I don't like listening to, to instruct, not that I don't like listening to instructions. I just feel like, um, whenever someone employs me, I felt like I was being kind of enslaved and it was like, because we pay you money, we get to, to do whatever we want to. And, um, it was kind of like not a good feeling. So I said, there must be more. And, um, it was, I was on vacation in September, 2018, uh, back in Egypt with my parents and, uh, I was sitting and my dad said, uh, Hey, you, you know, what are you doing? And I was looking up some protein powders. I wanted to buy protein powder, uh, before I went back to America. And, um, uh, he was like, why don't you just make your own supplement? And I said, you know, I, I already like buy, like I, I used to buy like egg, egg protein, like raw. And I would buy like cacao powder and I would buy like some casein or whatever and mix things up. And, uh, I'm like, yeah, I already like buy it and mix it at home. And he's like, no, no. He's like, why don't you start your own brand? And I said, start my own brand. Like it, I, it was not fathomable to me to, for me to even start my own company. So he said, yeah, look into it. You're super smart. I said, okay, let me look into it. 
And so I looked into it. Um, I did like a quick feasibility analysis. Like if I bought the raw ingredients, I, I said, okay, first of all, what am I going to make? Right. And I was a MMA fighter. I still am. And, um, I said, okay, I'm going to do something that's going to work for me. I was on keto at the time I was on the keto diet. And if you guys know about the keto diet, you know, like you use a lot of like salt, uh, you know, from your body, uh, just because of like the blood sugar is, is very stable and low. Um, and so I was like, I need something to replenish my electrolytes cause it's going to help me perform. So I said, okay, let me pull out how much the raw materials cost, how much the bag is going to cost label. I was like, Oh, it's going to cost five bucks and it sells for 25 bucks on Amazon. I have a home run. Uh, I called my friend. I said, uh, how do you start a company? And said, Oh, just go to legalzoom.com and start an LLC. I said, no way. And within two days I had an LLC. And so, uh, yeah, within two days I had an LLC, uh, contacted a friend from college said, Hey, can you make a design for me? Um, and she said, yeah, for sure. And, uh, went back, I had a girlfriend at the time and we talked about it and I'm like, oh, what's like a really good electrolyte name. <laughs> and we came up with hydrolyte. So hydrolyte was the electrolyte name came up with that. And I already had the formula and everything. And, and, you know, I'm, I'm a chemical engineer and chemist. So I was able to like do a ton of like research on the clinical data and get the doses and everything. And so I, I got a bunch of raw materials, mixed it up at home. I got some bags from Amazon, from some scoopers from Amazon, um, put them in there, uh, had the, the graphic designer from school help me. She made a design for me. I, I went, printed it, put the label on. And, uh, that was, I was like, okay, I have a company now. <laughs> I sell supplements. And, um, I posted it on Facebook and this guy said, Hey, you know, we have, a an MMA event coming up November 2nd, 2018. And so, you know, I, I officially incorporated the company on October 10th came back from vacation, like September 23rd or something, October 10th, incorporated the company. And November 2nd, I was at this uh, event and I said, yeah, sure. I'll show up. And he said, yeah, I'll get you like a free booth and everything. Cause I know you're just starting. I said, okay, awesome. And so I showed up there, uh, with 40 like bags and I was like, yeah, this is a soft launch, blah, blah, blah. And 25 sold. And I was like, wow, like I had no idea. Like people actually wanted my product and they kept asking me, where can I find your product? And I said, uh, I don't know what to say because, you know, I didn't have it on my website. I didn't have it anywhere. What well, I was going to tell them it's available only at one gym. I, I was in Rhode Island, uh, at the event and my gym was in Connecticut and people were coming from Massachusetts and New Hampshire. And so I was like, it's going to be on Amazon soon. And obviously I, I didn't know that it was going to be on Amazon or anything. And I just said, you know, I'm just going to say it. And then 20 days later, I figured out how to get on Amazon. I was ungated. Uh, I was approved to sell on Amazon ungated. And honestly, all it took was me researching it a ton. Like I deep dove that night, like watched a thousand YouTube videos. I called seller support the next day. I said, Hey, uh, you know, I'm, I'm calling you guys because I want to sell supplements on Amazon. How do I do it? And they're like, Oh, we'll walk you through it. You know, you need to, to send us this. You need to send us that. We need an invoice. We need a, you know, a certificate of analysis. And so I went to a manufacturer. I said, Hey, can you send me an invoice and certificate of analysis for this, uh, blend? And they said, yeah, sure. Here you go. I, they sent it to me. I forwarded it to Amazon. And next thing you know, November 22nd, I saw I, I was selling on Amazon. And, um, you know, I watched a bunch of the videos like, oh, make sure, you know, your friends buy and to get the velocity and everything. So um, and, and I also went hard on PPC. So I was spending like 100 bucks a day on PPC. And I think the first few days I sold five units. And then within like the third or fourth day, um, I remember I was at the gym in the morning. I'd done, just done with my swim and it was 10, uh, 10 sales a day. And I was looking at the, the orders and it was all random people. And so, yeah, within four days or so, I was like doing 10 sales a day, but I was spending a hundred bucks um, a day on PPC. So it was kind of like, I wasn't making any money. Um, and I had only ordered a hundred units. So my first batch was $500, a hundred units. And I was like, you know, what? like, let me just test the waters. Now I'm, I have a very different approach. And I tell people like, don't make the same mistake I did. Don't get a hundred units and then run out of stock. And, and my lead time was a week. So if my lead time is a week and these people are sourcing from China and their lead time is 60 days, I'm like, you know, may, maybe, maybe just like validate a different way and go all in and, and kind of have faith that, that you're going to move these products uh, no matter what. But yeah, that's kind of a summary. And, you know, fast forward, I started another uh, a women's brand and I sold it. Uh, and then I started uh, another uh, women's brand, uh, another athletic brand. And now I, I told you about the the new brand that we're starting, the it's, uh, it's going to be called Neuro. I haven't told anyone about it yet. So, I mean, obviously I'm assuming by the time this is out, we already uh, announced that, Hey, we're working on this project, but. Yeah, for sure. And we can dive into that uh, a little bit later, but 
What I really like about your story or one thing that I think people can really take from that is that you came up with an idea and you just kind of dove into it and just went all in and started working and you, you made it work. Cause this was what, what year was this? 2000? This is 2018. So it's September, 2018. Yeah. So not too long ago. And you went into an area of supplements that most people, if you ask, they would probably say, yeah, don't go into supplements. It's yeah. too, too competitive. You'll never be successful there. Yeah, it's not true. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, sometimes it, it can actually be a negative to research too much, right? That's mm -hmm. why a lot of times, uh, you know, just learn whatever your next step is and just keep going, keep going, and keep going. And while you were successful, not everybody is all, always successful, but everybody in businesses have, everybody in business, I should say, has successes and failures. And it's really all about just breaking down those barriers and keep moving forward. So that's kind of what I, I really like about your mm -hmm. story. You just, you had an idea, you ran with it and you just really made it work. Yeah. And, and my mindset was a little bit different. And I see a lot of people uh, kind of like, they say, oh, like, you know, I launched the product and it failed. And, and for me, that's not a failure because if you, uh, this is my mindset, right? Everything that I do, I'm learning from. And if you think about it, I, I spent so far on formal education, $100,000. Now, if I, you know, invest $5,000, $6,000 into a supplement or whatever, and it fails, I 100% did not lose my money. I just took that money and invested it into education. It's just a different type of education. And so with that with that being my mindset it's a lot easier for me to to be okay like going into things and knowing hey it might not work but this is the education yeah for sure so many people will you know they'll be like oh yeah i'll buy that tv for 500 bucks or a thousand dollars but they'll look at like uh some kind of training or something like that and they'll be like oh mm -hmm. i don't know if i want to spend that much for training where I mean, the training is so much more valuable than anything. And I've, I've gone through a lot of training. Anybody who is successful, a lot of times they've gone through a lot of training. They've got mentors and people that they've learned from and things like that. So it's definitely important. to That's know. huge. Yeah. A hundred percent. For sure. So you've built this, uh, this supplement company. Uh, what is uh, your, what kind of sales are you looking at on that company? If you don't mind sharing uh, no, yeah, no problem. So uh, right now Q4 has been like very horrible for me because it's an electrolyte brand. So I'm down in like the 50,000 range. Uh, usually, you know, Q1, Q2, Q3, I'm doing in the, in the 70, 80,000 range. Uh, the other brands are approximately 30,000 a month each. Um, and so, you know, and, and was able to sell the women's brand for, uh, 500,000. So, uh, that was a good project. We, uh, I got into that, grew it and sold it. So, you know, it, it doesn't sound like a lot, you know, people are selling for a million to a million, but uh, you know, again, all of this is just me kind of like learning as I go. And so, uh, you know, in no way am I, uh, like amazing at, at anything, but it's just, uh, I'm getting better every single day. And that's kind of my goal is just to be better than I was yesterday. So you know, with the supplement brands, uh, combined, I think uh, when last I checked, uh, on average is 140,000. So, uh, a month. So that's, that's doing pretty well in terms of the supplements. And I think there's, uh, I think I really want to grow the brands a, a lot bigger and then sell them for a lot more. I, the first one, uh, that I sold was kind of like, Hey, um, this is, this is proof that you can, you know, your business is a valuable asset and it can sell for a lot of money. And now it's okay let me significantly grow and, and, and make sure my P and L's and everything are, uh, you know, profit and loss statements are very clean and everything looks good and add as much value to get as big of a multiplier as possible on the business. Yeah. So those two brands, you said you sold two different brands. No, just one. Yeah. Just one, one brand. So, uh, how, what kind of level were we looking at at that brand when you sold it? I mean, so it had two SKUs, that's it. And, uh, it was, uh, I believe, how much was it doing in profit a month? It was doing like, uh, like $16,000 a month in profit, uh, just with two, two, uh, products. Um, nothing crazy. We were able to launch the product using social media, uh, use a lot of influencers. And then that kind of gave us some traction on Amazon. We were able to get a lot of reviews. And then from there, kind of the Amazon, I like switched my full focus to the Amazon algorithm and kind of like systemized the in, in Instagram where it's like, 
let's just keep contacting influencers and and basically we would go into one girl's because uh, it was a women's brand one girl's instagram page look at all her friends find the ones that have the good amount of followers tr- contact them to send them the product and then uh, you know go to the next <laughs> go to, to that one that we contacted and after she accepts it we go into her page and so we kind of built like this web and try to keep always like people connected because if i see uh, like five of my friends using uh, a product i'm kind of going to be like yeah you know i want to use it too uh, or if i see them all like you know maybe drinking the same drink or something i'm like yeah i want to try that too versus you know if uh, if i see one person here and then another person sees another person there and it kind of uh, i don't i don't want to do this disconnect so actually one of the things that i do with hydrolite is i go into gyms um instagram pages and i find everyone like all the members of that gym and i'll hit up like the 10 best uh, most influ- like you know high like highest amount of influencers so all of them get the product all of them post it and obviously they i i don't ask them to post it all i do is say you know just send me content and i post it on my story and tag them so naturally they just reshare the story and now like all of their friends from that gym are seeing like five different people using the same product and like yo what's this thing like i saw john use it and i saw matt use it and like you know what's what's up with this thing that everyone is using and they're like yeah it's like super cool you know they reached out to me and you know, number one, it's very good brand awareness, but it definitely will drive some sales as well. Yeah, for sure. That's a, a really good idea. I like the the way they're sending you content, you're posting and tagging them. Mm-hmm. Said that just- no one, I don't want to put anything on my feed. Like for me, if you look at my Instagram, it's like, it's pretty nice. And so I don't want to just be here with like a product holding it or something. It just kind of does not, it's not what I want my, my feed to look like. But if it's a story, I'm more than happy to share it. And then, you know, you're, you're already tagged in there because, you know, when, when you post a story and tag someone and, and then you repost that story, anyone can just click and see who's the owner of that story. So it makes life super easy. For sure. Very good. Yeah. So the, the big reason I wanted to bring you on here was to, to talk about your process of building your products and stuff on Amazon, because some people might be thinking, well, you know, this podcast is supposed to be about Amazon wholesale, not private label. So why do we got this guy on here? <laughs> private label brand. And I, I've been talking a lot about a method uh, I call Amazon wholesale mining refine, where we're finding garbage listings, uh, cleaning them up, making them look really good, get a lot more sales and try to roll that into exclusive agreements with a brand um, and reaching out to the brand and trying to help them uh, grow their products on Amazon. And of course, we get to sell those products for them. So let's really kind of dive into what kind of tips and tricks and things like that you actually did on Amazon to take your listing from nothing to doing $50,000, $60,000 a month. Awesome. So yeah, uh, more than happy to share that. So uh, let's break down the the Amazon detail page. So first thing is, uh, you know, you start, I think I've seen a lot of uh, consumer reports saying that there's, you know, two most important things. And I just want you guys to keep that in mind as we go through this whole thing. But the two most important factors on Amazon, uh, just due to the type of audience that's on there is the price and the number of reviews. And so, you know, and star rating, obviously it can be like 2000 to star reviews. So if you have a, a low price and you have really good reviews, you're, you're going to be successful on Amazon. And so with that being said, that's going to kind of uh, dictate a lot of, uh, of what's going on on the page. But if we start breaking the page one by one, first thing is you have your title. Now, this is how I, I create my title so that it is very, uh, it's a good title. It's converts. Well, it's good SEO. So what I'll do is. I'll figure out what the main keyword is. If you don't know what the main keyword is, I want you to type in what you think the main keyword is in a search and then go and look at the top competitors. Generally, you want the main keyword to be immediately after your branded name. So for example, for Hydrolyte, it's Hydrolyte Electrolyte Powder. My main keyword, which is the highest search volume. And and to explain the, the main keyword, it's the highest search volume keyword with direct relevance to your product. So if you're selling like a lamp, Uh, like a a color changing lamp, you don't want it to to be a lamp because yes, a lamp is going to have 300,000 search volume a month, but it's just not relevant to your product. It's yes. You know, your product is a lamp, but it's a color changing lamp. So 
color changing lamp would be uh, the, you know, the most relevant and high search volume keyword. And so go and look at your competitors and see what they have right after the branded keyword. So now that you figure that out, you want to go in and you want to search that main keyword. So for example, I'll search electrolyte powder and then I'll scroll down. I have the helium 10 Chrome extension and the helium 10 Chrome extension will tell me exactly the BSRs of every single product. So the BSRs is basically telling me who's selling the most, the lower the BSR, the more they're selling and BSR stands for best seller ranking. So I'll take 10 of those and I'll put them in reverse ACE and lookup in, in, in uh, helium 10 cerebro and I'll pull out the keywords from them. So what that will do is it'll give me every single keyword that every single one of those products is English for. So I'll have something like 40,000 keywords. Then I'll go into advanced filters and I'll hit nine minimum ranking competitors for the 10 products that I searched. And what that will do is it'll, it'll give me the intersection of every single uh, uh, of one of those products keywords. So any keyword in that list is ranked for every single one of those products. So I'll get a very nice, high quality uh, uh, list of keywords, and then I'll sort, sort by search volume. Now in my main, in my title, I want the main keyword to be right after the branded keyword. And then everything after that, I want to stuff with those highest search volume keywords that are relevant to my product while making it readable. So that's where it becomes almost a little bit of an art. So you do have the keywords, you have a list of keywords, you know that those keywords are super important. Now make it sound like a readable title. So you don't want to have something like hydrolyte, electrolyte powder, electrolyte supplement for athletes, men, women, uh, workout supplement energy, you know, it just it, no one wants that. So if you can make it sound nice, like hydrolyte, electrolyte powder, uh, you know, ultimate hydration formula for athletes with the sodium, potassium, something like that, that sounds nice. Um, uh, that's the goal. So that takes care of the title and the title is very important for SEO. And that's why I touched on it first. The second most important thing in my opinion is the, is the images. The main image is the most important because, because it's even a step before you even sell your product is if people are going to click on your product. So make sure your main image is a 3d render, um, or, or like a very, very high quality, uh, you know, uh, image with like, um, the, it's like, they call it like low light focus or something like that. It's basically like, you don't want shining in the image. You want the, the light to, to be very like low to, for it to be bright, but like not shine. Um, make sure that you crop the image as close as possible to the edges of the, uh, of the product so that you can, it can look big on the search because you don't want your product to, to look small. Make sure you remove the background, make sure you don't have any shadows. And if you do have shadows, make sure the shadows are super tight. So it doesn't look like the shadows are cropped in the image. And then after that, you, you have, uh, the, Oh, one more thing, uh, a tip for you guys is please compress. So make sure that your the minimum pixels that you use for the dimensions of the main image is 2000 by 2000. Anything less is like just not as good as quality and you want the product to be zoomable. So if certain products, you don't have those correct dimensions and you hover the mouse over it, it won't zoom. So you want to make sure you have at least 2000 by 2000 pixels, uh, always go for square because everything on Amazon is a square and then compress the image because it'll load way faster. So make sure you know you compress the images and, and it'll load way faster on Amazon. And that's with all the images, but the main one is important because last thing you want is to click on an image and it kind of looks a little bit clunky for a few seconds and then you know looks high quality. Now, with the rest of the images, understand that most people, including myself, when we're buying things on Amazon, I do not read most of the words. I just look at the images and the images sell the product to me. So it's very important to, to focus on the images. Um, a lot of people go to Fiverr and try and like cheap out on images or they'll use their manufacturer images or just stock images or pictures with their phone. Please avoid that. If there's anything you want to invest your money in, I would invest the money in the images because high quality images will sell your listing better than anything else. And the theme that I have in every single one of my listing images is features benefits why it matters to me as a customer so um features is okay let's say you have like 60 watt light bulb okay that's a feature benefits uh, you know uh, very high brightness okay what the, what does that matter to me as the customer so it say something like you know lights up your room as if it's broad daylight even on a on a you know a, a gloomy day okay that now that took me to a whole different place like it took me like if i buy this lamp even when it was gloomy out uh, you know like let's say you're in the northeast or something i'm i'm gonna feel good and just keep that same, every single image should like, even if it's a lifestyle image, I highly recommend that you have words in there that keep promoting. Why is this, why does this matter to me? 
this is going to make your life better in this way. This is going to make your life better in that way. And I've seen so many people talk about just features and benefits, but never touch on why it matters. Like you have to spell it out for the customer. Uh, Don't make them think like reach the conclusion for them and make sure, you know, all of the listing images are sales. and, And if you do have brand registry and you have a video, make a nice 30 second video, uh, have a lot of, um, pattern interrupts. So don't make it a long winded video, uh, where it's like, you know, three or four scenes, a lot of pattern interrupts and a lot of, uh, you know, uh, words that are popping up on the screen, benefits, 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 why it matters, why it matters and, and things like that. So in terms of listing images with the images you're taking, like, uh, for the, the secondary images, not the main image, cause that mm-hmm. is the product and all white background, but the secondary ones, you're taking photos of the product and putting like text and graphic overlays, you know, maybe, um, makes your room look like a bright sunshine day and you're drawing a line, mm-hmm. the, the light bulb or whatever the case. Yeah. Thing. And may, maybe you can do a split scr- image and then say, you know, traditional lamps and then uh, our lamp and then show like how it's a gloomy day in that room. And it's a very nice sunny day in that room. And, you know, kind of have like a few little bullet points on, on why that's better. Now, um, photography can be expensive. So here's one way that I do it. That's very cheap. Um, whether you manufacture in China or in the U S um, this is kind of like a, a hack. I know everyone's always looking for hacks. So instead of having to take pictures uh, of your product, because pictures or, or many pictures of your product, because that can be expensive. What I do is I take my product and I send it to a photographer. Um, I, I don't source in China. Some things I do, uh, like for example, the new one that I'm working on, it, the labeling, everything is in China. So I can do that, but generally I do it in the U S but it's not going to cost you more than two or $300 to send your product to a photographer and have them put it in a white box and take images of the product in all these different angles. So straight ahead to the left, to the right, this angle, that angle, all like lay it down, top down, left, right, everything. Mm-hmm. Take all of that, remove the background, and now you have brand assets. Now I go to a company, uh, I use a company called nolimitcreatives.com. Uh, they're like $400 a month unlimited graphics. Um, and, and so th- they will Photoshop as many pictures as I want for that flat fee, which is, I love because it's pretty economic for me as, as someone who started out a small and I send them those assets and I say, here are the images that I want. And instead of them looking like, a, you know, a, an ugly 3d render, uh, you know, f- f- like a computer image just shoved into a, a picture. And, and like, you're like, this looks fake. It's like, it is a real image with a real angle that they can insert into the Photoshop so well that it looks like you did actual real product photography. So that's one way you can kind of, instead of actually having to hire a whole, uh, you know, photography company and send your products and then they take the photographs in all these different situations, you just do it once in a white box and then send those assets to no limits. You know, obviously you can use any graphic designer. You don't have to use them, but pretty much the graphic designer can Photoshop those real images of your product into, you know, uh, stock background images and it'll look very realistic. And so that's one way, I, you know, I go about doing that next on we'll move right under the, the title. You'll see, you have the price, the number of reviews, the star rating, and then, uh, questions. And so for the price, you know, uh, highly recommended you do look at your range. And I understand I can't dictate to anyone how to go about it, but generally I like to start at the lower end, uh, of the price range and then move my way up. Now, for example, my friend Rob from the Genius brand, he also sells supplements way more successful than I am, but all of his stuff is like priced incredibly premium from day one. There's no right or wrong way. It's just, it's all pricing psychology. So just make sure you pick the one that aligns the most with what you're doing. Um, number of uh, reviews and star ratings. We'll get that. We'll get to that. Well, you know, when we get to the kind of the reviews, but questions. So that one is a very important one. Most people's psychology when they go on a listing is they want to find the first thing that will tell them why this product is not the right fit for them. I don't know if you, if you know about the psychology, but they're always like, we always do everything by process of uh, elimination. Uh, you know, Hey, Tom, what do you want to eat today? Okay. Um, you know, there's pizza, burgers, uh, sushi, uh, ramen. Okay. Uh, ramen is too heavy. So that's eliminated. Um, you know, sushi is like, I'm not really feeling it. Pizza or burgers. Okay. Let's do pizza. Cause we can share it. Burgers is like a little bit. Too- okay. So basically we got to our conclusion by eliminating the other options, not by saying which is the best one for us. And on Amazon's the exact same thing. 
people are looking at your products and they're trying to eliminate them because they're trying to reach the, the product that they want by process of elimination. So we want to remove any doubts that they might have. The questions is a very good way to do it. So questions is generally when a customer goes into your listing and they ask a question, um, you know, you get a notification in your email. Hey, you know, John asked this question. Uh, can you please answer it? And then you answer it. So why do we wait for customers to ask the questions? Why don't we just, you know, do all the work for them and ask any questions possible? So what I do is I have a buyer account and my buyer account is called the Amazon customer. Um, it's just very simple. It's my buyer account. I buy my stuff from it, but it, the name when say, okay, what's your name? Mina Elias. My name is Amazon customer. And then I use that account. I'll go into all of like my top 10 competitors listings. I'll go into all of the questions that they've asked. And I'll make a list or, or that people have asked on their listing. And I'll make a list of all of that. And I'll add any questions that I think are relevant to me. So now I have a, a list of like 200 questions. And I'll go into my listing with that buyer account called Amazon customer. And I'll keep asking those questions. And then people will get notifications or oh, Amazon customer asked the question. And so it doesn't you know, bring up any like red flags. Like why is one person asking the same question? It just sounds like an Amazon customer is asking a question. And then I'll go in from my seller email where I get those question notifications and answer everything one by one. And pretty much at that point, I have a frequently asked questions database right there. So if you have any questions on anything, you know, by using questions that people have previously asked or questions that I think people are going to ask, it's already answered there. So kind of try and eliminate as much doubt in people's minds as possible. I've never thought of that before, but that's really smart. And yeah, yeah. as far as you know, there's nothing in Amazon's service that could get you in trouble no. for that? No, you're, you're pretty much just asking questions. There's nothing wrong with asking questions. And um, if you think about it, you're making the customer journey even better because you're giving them frequently asked questions. I don't know why there is no FAQ uh, section in the Amazon uh, listing page, but there should be, uh, but this is one way to, to go about it, you know, to create a, a FAQ page without even, you know, with the option being available. Um, so after that. That's, I've yeah. never heard that before. So I really like that. And, and I'm gonna have to look into doing that. Um, yeah. Products for sure. Yeah, very easy. Uh, it doesn't take long and you don't even have to think of all the questions yourself. You can just, uh, get ideas from everyone else's listing. Perfect. So after that is uh, the, the bullet points. And so the bullet points show up next. Remember how we talked about that list of keywords that we got initially to create the title. So bullet points, you want to use that same list and you want to pack in as much of those keywords as you can in the, in the bullet points. The bullet points, the best format I've seen work is a short all caps and then colon and then uh, you know, uh, uh, like a, maybe a one sentence or two sentence description. And generally people are only going to read the all caps parts. So make sure that the short all caps parts highlight that it is, um, you know, a uh, feature benefit, why it matters to the customer. So again, you know, uh, whatever like is, is unique about your product, trying to highlight it there, make sure that it's in nice and big uh, caps because then people are only reading that. No, no one really wants to spend time reading Personally, I know I don't want to spend time reading like a paragraph on Amazon. So on the big and the big ones in the in the all caps uh, bullet points, make sure that that's where you talk about your benefits. And then for the keywords, you can kind of pack them into the sentences that come after that. Um, then, you, you know, you move on after that. You're going to see, you know, a bunch of like the sponsor products. Uh, if you have multiple products. Uh, have a few people go in and buy your product uh, and your other product and your other product. And then it, with enough times, it'll start showing as frequently bought together. So that's another way you can kind of trigger the frequently bought together. They're going to see, okay, you know, I bought Mina's Hydrolyte Blue Raz, uh, but also people frequently bought the Hydrolyte Blue Raz and the Mango Pineapple and like the energy one kind of all together. And it, you might get a, an upsell from there. You know, I don't really have any data saying that, it, but it, can't hurt. It's better than having someone else's product being in your frequently bought together. Um, so I'll do that to, you know, make sure that's there under that. I'll see sponsor products related to this item. Now sponsor products related to this item. If you have other products that apply to that product. So if I'm sell, I sell some like a hydrolyte, uh, it's an electrolyte powder. If I have any other supplement in there, if I was selling shoes, for example, cause I know some wholesale people will sell like many different things. So if I'm selling shoes, I'm not going to advertise on my, uh, electrolyte, uh, page, but if I'm selling anything else that relates to this supplement or even a food related or anything related to, to the target audience of that 
uh, I'll advertise on my own listing. So basically create a manual campaign, product targeting. And then when it says enter what ASINs you want to target, I'll, I'll target my own ASIN. And so this way I'm, you know, I'm targeting my own product and I'm preventing other people from showing up under my own product. So, um, uh, a good person to look at for that is uh, Bulletproof, uh, Bulletproof Coffee. If you go look at Bulletproof Coffee, um, they pretty much have all of their products advertised in, in every single one of their listings, and they kind of push out all of the competitors. You need to kind of go to page two of the sponsored products to see their competitors. So that's what I would do there. Uh, we go down, and now you're in enhanced brand content. So uh, one thing I wanted to mention on the bullets, because I do the same thing with the caps. Uh, mm -hmm. beginning and then you got to fill out the rest of the sentence you don't want to go too long and all that good stuff that you mentioned um i did just recently hear about that um amazon was suspending products i believe it was in the cosmetics niche only uh, for having those caps at the beginning so while oh. I, I still recommend doing it um, we probably want to keep an eye on that. You never know when they might expand that out and, and start blocking yeah. the products as well. But that's crazy. Cause I think like almost everyone does that. I know it's Everybody. like they would suspend everyone. I read, uh, I read some reports that products would be suspended and it was because of the all caps at the beginning of the bullet. Okay. Very interesting. So I'll definitely look into that. Maybe I'll call Amazon and ask them and say, Hey, is it against the terms of service to all caps, the beginning of the bullet points. But yeah, thanks for that tip. Yeah. So anyways, so after that, we have enhanced brand content or product description. So if you have, a, if you don't have an, a brand registry, I highly recommend that you do get brand registry. IP accelerator is incredibly cheap. It's $825 and you apply for a trademark and within two weeks you're in brand registry. And anyways, you're going to need a trademark if you're a legitimate business. So why, might as well just do it. Now, with that being said, if you do have a product description, you're going to need to do uh, convert from regular Word to HTML. So go to wordtohtml.com uh, and that will basically what you can do is you can write bullet points, caps, bold, italics, whatever you want in your product description. And then when you go and click on the HTML, it'll convert the words into HTML and then you copy the HTML, put it in your backend and it'll show up the same. If you do not you put it in HTML, it'll just show up as one long paragraph. So make sure, you know, you do that. And, you know, with creating the product description, unfortunately, it's very boring. Most people are not going to read it, but just try and have, again, more of the keywords in there, um, you know, to keep, uh, you know, giving you more and more SEO boosting for Amazon and make it nice and easy and simple. And keep in mind, it's always features, benefits, uh, why, uh, why it matters to me as a customer. And now if you do have enhanced brand content, I highly recommend that you do utilize it as much as you can. Um, do not try and put in a lot of words personally. I've not seen that work. And as a consumer, I just don't read, uh, you know, when I see a comparison and it's like blah, 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 words, 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 I'm like, ah, I don't want to spend time like peeping my eyes, reading those words. Um, and so all of my enhanced brand content, I try and stick to just modules that are large and it's an image with again, short, you know, five words uh, on the image, something to talk about again, benefits and why it matters to the customer and make it super short, quick and simple. Um, and I, I like it to be very heavily image based. Uh, first of all, you know, like the brain processes images like a thousand times faster than it processes words. So that's one pro of having images. And the second thing is most people are so fatigued when they shop on Amazon of reading words that they just want the images to kind of tell them the entire story. So try and sell your entire story uh, and your product just by the images. I think that will do pretty well. And then, you know, right past the enhanced brand content is where you get to the questions, which we already covered. Um, and then after that, you're getting into the reviews. Uh, and so with the reviews, there's a few strategies, but uh, I mean, Todd, if you want to add anything before I get into some review strategies. Yeah, yeah, for sure. So I was going to mention on the enhanced brand content. It's, it's really good if you are brand registered or the company that you're working with. Um, one thing that I like to do is you want to kind of think of it like uh, a website, you know, make it like the front page of a website, you know, not too much information, graphical, uh, what I like to almost do is kind of look at like your biggest competitors in the niche that you're in, go to their actual website. And if it's a professionally really nice done website, the front of that website is almost going to look like uh, what the enhanced brand content uh, would look really good at. 
Oh, that's a, a very good idea. I actually never thought of that, but uh, you're right. Enhanced brand content should be almost like a landing page. So maybe I'll look into that Go, going into competitors' websites and trying to mimic that in enhanced brand content. That's a pretty good idea. If you're not enhanced brand content, which a lot of the products that I work with are not, um, you do use HTML in your descriptions. You haven't run into an issue with that. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I always use HTML, and then, or I use, I write it in an HTML converter. I make it look nice, you know, bullet points, description, all that stuff, uh, and then it, it converts into HTML. I copy that, put it in the back end, and it comes out perfect. Okay. There's certain things that you can't uh, do in HTML. Like, um, like there's certain things that Amazon won't let you do. I think certain like characters and stuff like that. Just so be aware of that. And, and, um, honestly, I don't have a list handy. It's just, if Amazon kicks back as a, as a error, I'll just keep trying to find what's causing that error. And, and it's, it's nothing crazy. Like generally, if you just do all caps, bold bullet points, stuff like that, you're, you're fine. Yeah. Yeah. I usually try to stick to like line breaks so like new lines lists. So like bullet point lists and things like that in bold. Um, anything more than that, I think you're you're kind of walking a line that Amazon could get upset about. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And so I mean, it, it, and again, don't overthink it because like people are not really going to read the description that much. So maybe focus more of your energy on getting enhanced brand content. So with reviews, now reviews is I think one of the biggest things, and uh, I constantly want to get more and more reviews uh, with. First of all, with the existing reviews, if you have anything uh, that shows up as less than five stars on the first page, so the top reviews, you want to upvote all of the other uh, reviews so that they can kind of, you, you know, show up first. So the, how the reviews show up is depending on the number of helpful votes. So if, uh, if you have a one star review that has seven helpful votes and then you have a five star review that has eight helpful votes, it's going to show the first five star review and then a one star review. And you don't, want to, you don't want people to see that as soon as they go to the page. So it's as simple as copying the, the URLs to the re reviews and then sending them to friends, family, employees, and just say, hey, can you just click helpful on this review? It takes two seconds, uh, but with enough people, then you have like 20 helpful votes for like the first 10 reviews, for first five star 10 reviews, and um, you know pushes down that one star review. And I don't know if anyone's tried fighting with Amazon to remove a review. I've tried many, many times. It just give up. <laughs> There's, they're never going to remove. I don't think I've heard of anyone ever have a one star, uh, unless like they did something black hat, which I don't know about. Um, but instead of trying to fight it, just bump up all of your five star reviews so that those one stars don't show on the first, or even if you want to be more aggressive, don't even show up on the second page and kind of everything on the first and the second page of the reviews should be, uh, five stars. Now, with getting reviews, unfortunately, it is against terms of service to incentivize for uh, a review. But there are certain like, you know, gray area things that I like to do. So, for example, I have a, uh, an insert in some of my products I've been split testing. And basically on that insert, it says tag us on Instagram to get a, a, a you know, a free product or tag us on Instagram to get uh, $10 uh, cash or stuff like that, things like that. And so all I'm doing is I'm waiting for them to tag me on Instagram. And the second that they do, I have an employee there waiting uh, to engage with them. And the second they engage, they say, hey, um, I use Pixelfy.me. Pixelfy.me cr creates deep links. What a deep link is, is when you click on a deep link, uh, if you're on Instagram on your phone or if you're on Facebook on your phone or whatever, when you click on that link, it opens in the native Amazon app. So it opens straight into the Amazon app instead of opening in, uh, in the browser and in Instagram or browser and, and you have to input your username and password. I will never, trust me, I will never input my username and password. It's already saved on my app on, on my, and I probably don't even remember. I have to go back and find it. So if you ever ask me to do anything and I have to put in my username and password, I'm probably not going to do it. So I use pixelfy.me to create that deep link. And I click on that deep link and it opens up into the Amazon native app and it's, and basically I send them, I say, here's a link to leave me a review. I send them that link. It opens up into Amazon. Uh, and I, and I'll, I'll pretty much say for everyone that's already left us a review, we're offering this. And so technically I'm not incentivizing. I'm saying, you know, for people in the past who have left us a review, we're as a thank you, we're giving you a free product. Or, so if anyone has not left a review, they probably will leave it before screenshotting and send it to us. So kind of a way it is gray area i know it's against amazon terms of service to incentivize anyone to leave a review but 
I have not yet found a way where someone out of the kindness of their heart is going to leave me a five-star review. It's usually a one-star review of people complaining. Um, and then the deal, the way that I deal with one-star reviews is I'll really go and uh, try and do my best in terms of customer service. But sometimes people are just bitter. They'll leave the one-star review and they don't want anything to do with you. And, you know, you just got to take the loss and, and keep moving. And uh, it's no big deal. I remember when I first got my first one-star review, it was worse. Than, it was a worse feeling than a breakup. Like my first, it was worse than my first breakup. And uh, I sat at the office, so, you know, I was like this, I couldn't focus. I was like, man, like, uh, that's it. Like my business is over, but like, trust me, it's okay. Like nothing's gonna happen. Um, you just have to keep getting more five-star reviews. And, you know, I, I really want people to engage with me on Instagram because once I get them into Instagram, I, I have a, a, an open line of communication with them. And I'm always like hitting them up and, and texting them and, and messaging them and, and saying, Hey, like, how about you send us a picture? And like, you know, when you send us that picture, like we'll post it on our story and we'll tag you and things like that. And just kind of get them going and make them feel special and make them feel part of the brand. I think that is one thing that will separate our brand from, you know, other brands who are on Amazon that are, you know, obviously if you're, uh, there's very big supplement brands, they're doing a way better job than I am. So I definitely look up to them, but uh, compared to the Amazon brands that are just trying to pump, 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 and like do all like the little things and hacks and stuff like that. I'm trying more to build a, a relationship with my customer because as soon as I build a good relationship and I leave a, a good, like uh, taste in their mouth, um, I know that they're always going to come back. And um, you know, the, the lifetime value for supplements, it can be very long. I, I know one of my customers, um, her name is Jenna. She has bought uh, 12 times from us so far. So, you know, having a, a good loyal uh, customer following can be amazing. And that all also feeds into subscribe and save and, and having a lot of subscribe and saves. I think having a lot of subscribe and saves also uh, very significantly uh, increases the value of your business. So, you know, if you were naturally going to sell for 500,000, maybe you could sell for 600,000 just because you have such a, a large amount of subscribe and saves that, you know, it, it kind of adds the value of your business just because you have that recurring revenue. Um, but that's pretty much it in terms of the list, the listing, you know, detail page. Yeah. So just for anybody not aware of the subscribe and save is for like in the grocery category, especially so people can subscribe and get things monthly, bi-monthly or something like that and get a percentage off. So that's really helpful if they're selling in any kind of category that has that. It's definitely consumable product. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Now, just to kind of bring it back around to Amazon Wholesale, because <clears throat> some of the stuff that we touched on may not necessarily apply to us working on the listing, but knowing and understanding some of these things, like what you're talking about on Instagram, which is a really great way to build a following and build out your brand and stuff like that. Well, we might not be doing that personally. If we can be the person who is giving these tips and tricks to the brand and we're also selling their products, we can become the Amazon guru for them. And that's just gonna be better solidification of that relationship that we're building with that brand. Absolutely. And, and I've been there uh, too. So um, like I said before, uh, I did partner with my manufacturer and um, you know, I went in and I looked at his brands and you know, as soon as I, I said, you know, I'm looking at your brands, I could definitely help you. L give me just one product. Let me start with one. And I started with one and I made it better. And I went, moved to the second and the third and the fourth. And, um, and I was just doing it out of the kindness of my heart. I did not want anything. I just, I was like, thank you for being a good manufacturer to me and, and not being a bad person. And so in exchange, I just want to help you out. And as you saw that happening, um, you know, the relationship significantly improved and, I, you know, got better terms. I got a lot of leeway. I, I mean, he now even utilizes his R and D team. And for me, I, like I am, a, I'm a very small brand. Like I'm probably his sm smallest uh, brand that he manages. Like the minimum uh, that he does for anyone is uh, like around seven to 10,000 units a month. And I'm not anywhere near that. I mean, not even for like a, you know, for, for one brand, uh, you know, maybe all my brands combined. Yes. But you know, so in terms of, of, of that, like, Helping, I really believe like if you go in there and you add as much value as possible uh, to someone that you're trying to sell or pitch or whatever. Uh, and I always believe in like give, give, give. And if you give enough value, not waiting for anything in exchange, you will get way more than that you even wanted to ask for in return. So 
I think it's a very good idea. If you can become that Amazon guru for that, you know, your wholesale partner, um, and then offer them all this advice and say, you know, here's a strategy that someone uses. Here's this, here's that. I can help you with this. I can help you with that. And just offer it just because you want to help. And then in exchange, like there, like it's an intangible, uh, value when you have a, a relationship, like, you know, you can, uh, for example, the relationship between two best friends is, you know, if, if they did go into business, like there, it's not a monetary like value being that it's your best friend. You can go and say, Hey, like, can you do this favor for me? And they will more than willingly do it. Um, just cause you have that relationship. So I think relationship building is incredibly important in this business. Oh yeah. hundred percent in, in the wholesale world. It's, it's the most important thing. A, a lot of like private label retail arbitrage, there's a lot of, uh, logistics and, things that you need to work on. But in wholesale world, it's really all about the relationships. Yeah. And and, uh, one thing that I do with with my manufacturer that I think everyone can also implement with their wholesale partners is I have um, a file for every single one uh, one of them. And I have uh, like the name, his name, his wife's name, his kid's name, uh, what he likes, what his wife likes. Uh, and his birthday, his wife's birthday, things like that. And I just slowly kind of like, uh, you know, pull that information over time. And then every single uh, kind of uh, event or, or like a national holiday on, on Thanksgiving, I'll send him a gift basket for the kids. On Christmas, I'll send him a gift basket for the kids. Um, during their birthdays, I'll send them a specific, like he like really likes coffee. So every time I fly somewhere uh, that has nice coffee, like I was in Seattle the, uh, the other uh, week, um, I bought a bunch of coffee and I gave it to him and, um, kind of like just having those gifts, I wouldn't call it it's bribery, but I, I really just, um, uh, maintain a good relationship with someone that I really care about. I, I think that it, without him, I would have not got, got, not gotten to where I am today. And he's significantly impa- impacted like my life. He's made me a lot better. Um, he's also passed on a lot of advice. Um, uh, you know, he has been in the supplement game for 30 years now. So all of that advice that's been passed on to me, um, it really helped. And so, um, you know, I am grateful to that. And so just maintaining that relationship by having those, a file, and then, uh, you know, I just have my assistant, I say, Hey, uh, you know, schedule emails on, you know, November 7th, uh, whatever, December 8th, and all these like different dates where it's like either a birthday or, you know, something, or maybe it's the kids schools is going to go out. So maybe on the last day of school, I'll send them a bunch of chocolate and things like that. Um, you know, just those little things, uh, they go a long way. Yeah, it's super smart. And and most people do not do that. So you're just immediately setting yourself apart from everyone else and building that relationship, like we said. And that's, that's really what Mm -hmm. it's all about having that personal connection. And it can go a long way for getting discounts, maybe getting exclusives on new products. Yeah, whatever the case may be, for sure. And and I think the two most uh, significant things. So for me, uh, you know, a lot of people try and negotiate price and stuff like that. I don't worry too much about price. Uh, my lead time and my uh, my uh, next uh, my uh, terms. Those are the most important things because the lead time will aff- and the 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 you know payment terms will affect my cash flow cycle. And the shorter and I've run the simulation. The shorter my cash flow cycle is, the the much more money I can make. So maybe having the same cost of goods. If I save a dollar, then maybe I'm saving three grand a month. But if I, you know, reduce my lead time by two weeks, I can then have, you know, maybe 50 to a hundred thousand dollars additional by the end of the year. And so it is a significant impact. And so that's kind of why I I really care about building the relationship and staying away from it being a business money driven relationship and more of like a, you know, we're friends that are doing business together type thing, because just by shortening and, and, you know, most of us know, like the lead time is not really the lead time. They give you a lead time kind of just, Hey, like this is an average, like we're going to be safe. And at least for private labor, for manufacturing, they're like, Oh, it's four weeks lead time. I'm like, no, I know that it's one day in the factory. You're just putting me in a line. But if you have uh, someone who really cares about you, it's like, Hey, can you really help me? And they're like, okay, yeah, just like, tell me what you need. And we'll sneak it in, you know, between like this order and that order and kind of can, can help you out. So that, that will go a long way. Absolutely. hundred percent. All right. So anything else on the product page or did we cover everything there? No, I think we covered everything, um, you know, that you can do in to, to kind of optimize, uh, the listing there. I'm trying to think, but I can't think of anything else. 
Do you use the uh, Amazon Early Reviewer Program or the new, um, is it the Vine Program, I think it's called? Uh, yeah, um, I have had good success with the Vine. I have not had good success with Early Reviewer Program. A lot of them kind of like leave four and three star reviews, which I don't like. Um, I, I don't know. I think the people that the Amazon chooses are, might be like, um, you know, people like who take reviewing a little bit too seriously. So personally, I already have a hundred people in line for any product that I launch. I have more than a hundred and, uh, every single product that I do launch is something that, uh, I can use. And, you know, most of the time I can use and, and other people can benefit from. So it's not a difficult thing to kind of say, Hey, you know, I'll get you the product for free, uh, in exchange for reviews since you're my friend and, uh, kind of go that route. So, um, I have no, no issues getting the initial reviews. Okay. Good, good. Yeah. And for anybody not familiar, the, the early reviewer program allows you to get up to your first five reviews, uh, for like 60 bucks. And then the vine program is basically a way for Amazon to allow you to give away free product in exchange for reviews, which is yeah. exactly what it, they do. It's cool when they do it, right? right. Yeah. Kind of makes you laugh a little and shake your head, but, uh, that's what happens when you're playing in somebody else's playground. They want to cut. Exactly. Yeah. But yeah, that's, uh, that's all the advice I can give on that detail page. Okay. Awesome. And so last but not least, let's touch on, uh, PPC. So advertising on Amazon, what kind of tips can you give people in that area? Okay. That, that's a, a long one. That's a very long one. Okay. So, um, in terms of PPC, that's kind of like uh, where I excel because, uh, starting off as, you know, a small supplement brand in a big, you know, there's a lot of big supplement sharks out there. I needed to really have a good handle on my PPC. Now, the general strategy is this. You want to launch campaigns that will discover new keywords for you. Um, discovery campaigns uh, are basically the auto broad and phrase campaigns. Those are the ones where you can input, uh, you know, keywords and, and ACEs and they will discover new uh, keywords for you. And so you're technically discovering. So you want to launch those discovery campaigns. The overall goal is to find every single keyword and ASIN possible that is related to your product that you should be advertising on, even if it's not profitable and then target it. And then once you're targeting it, you can then optimize the bids. So if it is profitable, keep it there. If it's not profitable, lower the bids until it either becomes profitable or it stops getting any impressions at all. So, um, you know, the first step is, Break up your auto campaign into four uh, groups, the, the close match, loose match, compliments, and substitutes. The reason I do this is because you can have very high performance in the close match and then horrible performance in the, in the compliments. And so you don't want to have them all intertwined because then what if you want to scale the substitutes or what if you want to scale the close match, but the you know, loose match is not doing so well. So break them up uh, you know, into the four targeting groups um, and then have your main keyword in one keyword only. Uh, one in broad, one in phrase, one exact campaign. So that's three separate campaigns, each with one keyword for your main keyword. And that will help you um, get a lot of traction on that main keyword and then get your top 10 keywords. Again, the top 10 keywords you can get from that list we talked about initially, and then you can have that in a broad phrase and exact campaign. And so that will be a good setup for you to start discovering keywords. And then from there, um, you can, you know, there's other uh, campaigns that you can launch too. Personally, I will launch a broad phrase and exact branded campaign. So anything that has hydrolyte or MMA nutrition in it, and then I'll launch uh, a campaign targeting, uh, that, uh, my own, uh, products that's to defend my products. Like I, t I talked about the bulletproof. And then, um, I also do a category targeting campaign. So for all the categories, uh, that my competitors are in, I'll target that category and then I'll click refine. And I'll refine it by more expensive than me. So the minimum price is $1 more than I am. And then the, the maximum number of uh, star reviews is three stars or less. This kind of makes me target low hanging fruit. So now that, you know, it's three stars or less and it's more expensive. So it's a no brainer that I'm better. And I'll have those campaigns set up. Now the discovery campaigns are already discovering keywords for me. And so I'll wait about a week. It depends. I'm pretty aggressive. Um, another tip is please make sure that you have at least a hundred dollar budget and then start with a lower bid. Do not do a $10 or $20 budget. Amazon's going to look at that and say, this person does not have enough money to spend and automatically just not show you in, in placements. So if you say that you have a hundred dollar budget and then you control your spending by having a lower bid, that's where you're going to see a lot more success. And so I start there. I wait about a week or two weeks. I go into the search term reports. Now the search term reports will show 
everything that the auto and broad and phrase campaigns have discovered. I'll pull everything out and I'll deduplicate. So what that means is I'll make sure that anything that I pull out, uh, uh, like let's say I'm, I'm gonna start targeting in broad match. So I'll pull all the keywords and I'll say, okay, I'm gonna start launching them in broad match. Just make sure that I don't already have those keywords already in broad match. And so once I remove any duplicates, I'll then launch all of them in broad match. Generally keep it 10 keywords or less per campaign. The reason I do that is because anything more than 10 keywords, I've just noticed that Amazon will just send all of the budget to that, to the like top five or 10 keywords. And then all the other keywords won't get any impressions. And if you're not getting impressions for your keywords, it's pretty much like you're not targeting them. So kind of keep them 10 per campaign. Even if you have 50 campaigns, hundred campaigns, it doesn't matter. You want to actually be driving traffic instead of pretending that you're driving traffic by having them all in one campaign. Mm -hmm. Also campaign structure needs to be uh, like a one-to-one. -one. So campaign, uh, ad group and then the 10 keywords. The reason I do that is if I do have multiple ad groups, I cannot control how much money Amazon sends to one ad group versus the other. So I could have a hundred dollar campaign budget and then it goes $90 in ad group one and then $10 in ad group two. So to avoid that, I will just keep it pretty linear. So again, I'll pull out all the broad, uh, all the keywords. I'll launch them in broad phrase exact, make sure I don't have any duplicates in there. And then I'll pull out all the ASINs and launch them there. And then I'll keep repeating that process. And then I'll go into the search term reports uh, to start, you know, trying to look for, for anything that is bleeding me, which basically is spending money and not giving me a good return on investment. And because, you know, it, it sucks because if it's a broader phrase, uh, one keyword could be bringing down the whole keyword. So, uh, you know, let's say broad electrolyte powder, it'll be triggering for sugar-free electrolyte powder, uh, but maybe you know, uh, uh, Ultima electrolyte powder is bleeding me. It's spending a lot of money. It's not making sales, but all of these, it, it'll trigger for 50 or 60 keywords. So all of those could be profitable that just one is not doing well. And so I'll go into the search term report and I'll find those ones and I'll make sure. So anything for me that is over in the last 30 days, over a hundred percent equals in a broader phrase or auto, um, or anything that spends more than $15 or more in the last 30 days with no sales, I'll negative that. And I'll, and I'll negative it for now. And then as my reviews get better and better, I'll, you know, remove the negatives and kind of start fresh again. Are you uh, using any software to do all of this or are you doing this all through the Amazon interface? No. So I'm doing everything through bulk sheets. So I'm not using software because I don't trust software. I'm a very paranoid guy. I've used uh, a software in the past and it's ruin my campaigns. So I will download the bulk sheet. So if you just go to uh, campaign manager on the left, click the three dashes, go to uh, bulk operations, and then it'll download the bulk sheets for like the last 30 days. And that was the last thing I was going to touch on. So it, it, for the last 30 days uh, for, for the bulk sheets, I'll go in and I'll sort everything uh, by, so I'll, I'll go into, I'll highlight everything, click filter, go to column B, and then only show keywords and product targets. And that shows me every single keyword or ASIN that I'm targeting. I'll then go and sort everything by ACOS, largest to smallest. Anything over my desired ACOS, and usually my desired ACOS is my break-even ACOS, which is equal to my profit margin before advertising. Anything above that, I'll lower the bid by five cents. Anything that's below that up to like 1% ACOS, I'll keep it the same. Or maybe, you know, anything that's below like 15% ACOS, I'll increase it by five cents. And then anything that's getting uh, more than five clicks and no sales, I'll lower the, uh, the max bid by five cents. Um, and then I'll go down and anything that it has less than 300 impressions, I'll increase by 10 cents to make sure that, Hey, I'm increasing the bid until it gets impressions. And, um, the reason I go for break even ACOS is that I'm okay spending up to break even, uh, or up to my entire profit, uh, to, to make a sale just because I know that that's going to get me more and more traction. And the more traction that I get, it's going to spill over into organic sales and that's where I'm going to make my money. So I make sure to always track my PPC spend divided by my overall revenue and not just by my campaign manager uh, PPC revenue because I get a better picture of how everything is going because I've tried in the past turning off PPC thinking that I was going to get the organic sales that I'm getting now, but I lost all of my sales. And it, it, it's just not a secret that Amazon is pay to play and that if you turn off your ads, you're not going to you know, get uh, a lot of organic sales. Yep. Yep. For sure. So a lot of good information there. Um, some of that probably went over a lot of people's heads, which is the thing you can replay the video. Yeah. You can replay the video, grow into this stuff. Uh, you don't have to know all this stuff immediately, but, um, 
learning and knowing that this stuff is out there and growing and, and building on top of the knowledge you have is super important. So you definitely mm -hmm. know your stuff when it comes to building out listings and stuff like that. I can see why your brands are doing so well, which is pretty awesome. I appreciate it. Yeah. Um, now I'm sure we could spend another probably hour talking about PPC really easy. Uh, but what I wanted to point people over to, if they're interested in learning more, you do have a PPC university, correct? Yeah. So I have a, a one hour free training there. So PPC university is a, a PPC course. It covers everything, uh, PPC related very technically, but if you just wanted to kind of get a, a really good one hour, it's not just an intro, but I, you know, pretty much cover what I talked about, but in like a lot more depth, uh, if you go to the, the PPC university.com, uh, that will have a uh, one hour free training. Yep. And that's the PPC university.com. And then what we just click on the free training that it says right at the top. Yeah. Click on free training. It says, uh, uh, show preview. You click on that. And then there's a one hour video right there. Um, there's no fluff. There's no pitch. There's nothing. It's just straight up. Like, you know, starting from auto camp or you know, general strategy all the way to bulk sheet optimization and bleeding and refreshing keywords and everything. It just covers everything. Um, and it's just kind of like my way to, uh, I, I know it's hard. I know it's hard. And when I first started, it was very rough for me. And I just, I, you know, to me, like I'm going to make my money selling my brands. I'm going to make my money selling supplements. Uh, I'm not going to become a millionaire off of like selling a course, but, um, you know, I, I really wanted to help people. I struggled a lot at the beginning and, and I struggled uh, just understanding PPC and how it works. So the hour free training is kind of just like, Hey, you know, I, I don't want people to feel like they're, they're all alone in this. Like there's people out there. Um, like I said, I, I mean, I'm not worried about making money. I know where I'm going to make my money. Um, the only reason I charge for a course is because obviously I can't give my time away for free. Sure. So we'll throw that link in the show notes. If anybody's watching on YouTube, That'll be down below as well, so they can check that out. Um, now, why don't we wrap up? You want you mentioned in the beginning uh, about a new brand, brand. You're working on. If you want to tell anybody about that, now's your chance. Awesome. Okay. Yeah. So that uh, very, it's a very very exciting brand. Uh, I was talking to Todd. Uh, Todd shares, um, you know, my my love for coffee. Uh, however, I stay away from coffee because I'm uh, very afraid to get overly dependent on it. And I, I know that I will. Um, and so I only allow myself to have coffee once a week on Saturday. And it is so beautiful. I wake up in the morning, I go surfing uh, in Santa Monica, and then I come back shower uh, and go get Starbucks and sit outside in the sun. And it's, it's amazing. And I love that ritual. And so I, I kind of wanted to come up with something that is a replacement that's also, uh, you know, not bad for you, doesn't, you know, hurt your adrenals or anything like that, the same way coffee does. So we came up with Neuro and that's a new brand. It's going to be out on Kickstarter. Um, you know, we're launching it on Kickstarter. And the reason I'm launching it on Kickstarter is to show everyone that you can start a brand with zero, even though I can invest my own money. Um, you know, and if, if we don't raise enough money, I'm probably going to have to invest my own money, but it's no big deal. I just want to show everyone that you can start a brand uh, from scratch and, and launch it successfully without any uh, investment other than people backing uh, your idea. And, you know, the, the source of energy is going to be cola nut and guarana, uh, and it's going to have ashwagandha and lion's mane and chaga and, uh, you know, a bunch of other adapt adaptions there to kind of help you with your mood and, and, and um, you, you know, not fatigue your adrenals, kind of replenish them instead of fatiguing them like coffee does. And then there's going to be other elements like turmeric, ginger, um, you know, black pepper, cayenne pepper, uh, Celtic sea salt and things like that that also add to the benefits of the product. And uh, it's going to be in the form of a latte. So uh, my goal, if anyone lives in California and has been to Erewhon, they have a, a like a, a mushroom cappuccino in Erewhon. And that is like tastes so delicious um, and is naturally flavored with monk fruit. So I, I will try and as close to as possible get to that flavor. It's like a very nice cappuccino uh, flavor. So we'll see if it, we can achieve that, but that's the goal. Um, and so the base is going to be kind of like cacao and, and um, you know, uh, raw almond milk uh, powder and things like that. So um, we'll see how that goes. Uh, but yeah, I mean, that's my new project. I'm working on that. Uh, I'm w working with um, an Amazon FBA uh, YouTuber. Uh, and so we're documenting the entire thing. And um, it's more of a passion project more than anything. It's not, I mean, I know, I think we can be very successful with it. It's something that I see I need. And I think 
everyone can use a break from coffee, even if they love coffee and everyone loves having that morning ritual. So why not give everyone that morning ritual that they want, but with something that's good, that will still give you that energy. It's not going to be as good as coffee. Coffee will definitely get you wired. Coffee is very powerful. Um, I don't think it's going to be as good, but it's going to be very close and it's going to be good for you. And it's something that you can kind of, you know, enjoy and like, you know, put that hot water, froth it, enjoy it, you know, in your balcony uh, or on your deck in the sun. And um, so that's kind of the new project that I'm working on. Yeah, for sure. Can you can mix it up with coffee, maybe if you're addicted. To yeah, coffee. yeah. If, if yeah, you, I mean, I don't see why not. If you want to throw some coffee in there, you totally can. Yeah, it definitely sounds really good. My my wife has kind of getting gotten into some of that stuff, like the lion's mane and stuff. Mm-hmm. I love monk fruit. Uh, that's what I use to sweeten my coffee just a little bit. Just put a little bit. That's of all you need. To bite out. And so I'll definitely keep an eye out for it. And you said it's Nero with an N? No, uh, yeah, it's a Nero. So N-U-R-O. Um, and and uh, we are hoping to have like the Instagram and everything uh, up and running by next week. Uh, we already have a ton of content. And then we're hoping within uh, the next few weeks to kind of have it uh, up on Kickstarter and start raising the money. And it's gonna, we're going to raise money for 30 days. Um, you know, try and get as many backers as possible. I know a lot of people can really use this. Um, and production is not long. So by the time the Kickstarter is over, I would say probably two weeks before you get it. So, uh, it's not like one of those Kickstarter campaigns where, you know, you pledge and then you get the product like two, three months later. Um, you know, our production time is pretty short, so we can definitely, uh, get it out pretty quick. Yeah. The idea of launching on Kickstarter is is a pretty cool one. You see that fairly often like on shark tank and stuff where brands mm-hmm. launched on kickstarter and then they're now they're trying to build off of that platform so it can definitely be powerful if you can build the traction and you almost kind of gain like a, a cult following of exactly from that and that's kind of our goal is we're going to try and right now as so as so we just wrapped up a, a branding call yesterday so we're going to finalize our branding, messaging, everything tomorrow, and then uh, set up our uh, group, uh, like a Facebook group, and, and get that as a launch group and, and have everyone, everyone, everyone share, 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 um, you know, and get everyone in that group. And then as soon as we launch on Kickstarter, kind of push everyone to Kickstarter, run ads to the Kickstarter and um, kind of like, you know, get a lot of momentum going. And um, we're also going to see if we can talk to Jellup or, you know, one of those uh, Kickstarter, you know, partners. Uh, I think, I believe they take like 15% of uh, everything you raise, um, but they don't, you know, if you don't raise anything, they don't take anything. And I, I think it would be cool. I think we can negotiate them down because we're, you know, doing this on um, uh, YouTube and they're going to get a lot of uh, tra- like a lot of visibility and a lot of the audience is very applicable to, to using them. So I think we can negotiate them down, but uh, you know, we're going to try and, you know, leave no stone unturned and, um, see how that works. And at the end of the day, you know, I'm, I'm very, I'm going to have a lot of fun with it. So I'm happy. It's not something that, you know, I'm running after money for. It's more of like, just, I wanted to prove to everyone that you can create something you really like, and you don't need to have a lot of money to make money or, or be profitable or anything like that. For sure. And you got to have fun with it. That's what this is all about. Trying mm-hmm. to build a life that you enjoy living, you know, get out of the nine to five grind and, and build your own life. Uh, so definitely when you have that Kickstarter up, send me the link over, I'll throw it in the show notes and maybe we can throw some traffic your way and help you out with that. So um, other than that, I, I think that about wraps up everything we wanted to touch on. We had a lot of really great information. This is probably one people are going to want to listen to maybe a couple times to really dive into the details we talked about. But uh, I really appreciate you coming on the show and sharing all the, the great knowledge. Awesome. I appreciate it. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. You have an awesome Thanksgiving coming up here tomorrow after recording. So yeah, you're going to eat a lot of food. Have a good day. All right. So there you go. Fantastic interview with Mina. I learned a lot of really good tidbits in there. Some gold nuggets, as we like to say, and I hope you did as well. This might be one that you want to listen to a second time because we really went in depth on some of these things and they might have gone over your head. So maybe it's something that you want to come back to at a later date, even as you further your Amazon journey. But 
at least you know all these little things that you can do tips and tricks to build out listings and increase sales on Amazon. So you can share that knowledge with other people, build those relationships like we talked about in the beginning and during the interview there. Uh, and make sure if you're interested in checking out his free training, go to thepppcuniversity.com, click on free training. You can really dive into the PPC advertising on there. So it's really nice of him to share that with us. I'll put that link in the show notes or the comments down below if you're on YouTube as well. If you want the transcripts or the show notes, head on over to entrepreneuradventure.com forward slash 52 since this is episode 52. So with that, that wraps up this episode. I'm your host, Todd Welch, signing off. Happy selling, everybody. This has been another episode of the Entrepreneur Adventure Podcast. Thanks for listening, fellow entrepreneur. And always remember, success is yours if you take it.